Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull has reaffirmed Australia's commitment to a two-state solution between Israel and the Palestinians as he concluded his trip to the region. He made a brief visit to the West Bank to meet Palestinian leaders and said his government was opposed to unilateral action by either side. From Jerusalem, Sophie McNeil. And now let us see it. Prime Minister Turnbull has not been short of Israeli leaders keen to host him. And today it was the country's president. In the name of all the people of Israel, I can say to you that uh, we are so pleased that you are here. Mr President, thank you. And the welcome has been so warm. Uh, we thank you for it. We share so much history, but above all, we share the same values. The Prime Minister toured Yad Vashem, the Holocaust Museum, remembering the murder of six million Jews. It is one of the most moving experiences that anyone can have. And he planted an olive tree at the Grove of Nations. Any time with a good-looking man like this, come on. <laughs> After nearly two days in Israel, a quick trip to the occupied West Bank. Palestinian officials described the meeting as warm and friendly, but said they were disappointed the Prime Minister only stayed one hour. He should have given himself time to come and see reality, to go to Hebron and see the system of apartheid. He should have toured the wall, which is three times as long and twice as high as Berlin Wall. The Palestinians say they asked the PM to put pressure on Israel to stop building Israeli settlements in the occupied West Bank. Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull said he did raise the issue of settlements with the Israeli Prime Minister, but he didn't say what he said or if he believes they undermine the feasibility of a two-state solution. Australia is, uh, supports a two-state solution, that's to say two states for two peoples. Palestinian officials told the ABC they also expressed disappointment to Mr Turnbull that they had been excluded from official commemorations to mark 100 years since the battle for Beersheba. <laughs> Sophie McNeil, ABC News, Jerusalem. And that World War I battle saw around 800 Australian light horsemen manage to do the near impossible. After an exhausting three-day ride across the desert, they volunteered to try to take the heavily fortified town of Beersheba in a cavalry charge against overwhelming odds. Our chief foreign correspondent, Philip Williams, travelled with the family of one of the original light horsemen for the reenactment. This was literally do or die. Immortalised in films, the charge of Beersheba pitted 800 Australian light horsemen against the well-armed and entrenched Turks. Machine gun against man and beast. When the last gun was silenced, 31 Australians lay dead. The bodies of 70 horses were scattered where they fell. Sergeant Henry Harry Peard was awarded the Distinguished Conduct Medal that day for charging a machine gun post with another soldier. He and a young man charged a turret single-handedly. They got through the bullets somehow and then took over the, the trench. I knew he was a light horseman. had no idea how amazing he was um, that he'd been a very brave man. They all were, of course. But he was a war hero, and so yeah, I'm going to honour Pop. That's what I'm going to do. It's a long way from her beautiful Kapiti Valley property west of Sydney, but for Lynn Richardson, the journey to Beersheba is an act of love for her grandfather, who passed on his passion for the horses she now breeds. They were incredibly brave, but they wouldn't have done it without Australian stock horses, as we call them now. But the whalers. You know, this breed has been capturing those horses that were sent over to war and so many went and never came home. Joining the pilgrimage to Beersheba, Lynn's husband Bruce and Robbie Holdaway, practising for the reenactment of the charge and watched by David Lester, son of light horseman, Bruce Snowy Lester. What they saw, some of their mates killed right alongside them and little things like that. It, it's an experience that you'd have to go through yourself to really know what it really was. 
On the porch of his father's mudgy home, David Lester and daughter Robbie show me some of the personal items from that campaign. These are his spurs that he wore through the entire campaign. This is the bit out of the mouth of his beloved Goo Goo. What happened to Goo Goo? Well, uh, as far as I know, he was put down. By your father, do you think? I doubt if Dad could have shot him. That must have been a heart-wrenching moment for your I, father. I it was a heartbreaking moment. The uh, light horsemen had rather lose their best mate than their horse. Now in the dry desert of southern Israel, the Australians are back, retracing the journey towards Beersheba, preparing for a recreation of the famous charge, following the same route taken by their grandfathers, great-uncles and dads. It's absolutely unbelievable. I think that I'm here 100 years later, and Dad was here. It's quite emotional, yes. It's a, a thing that I thought would never happen, but it has. For David's daughter, Robbie, it's a deeply personal experience, a powerful blend of land, history and family. Oh, it's amazing. It's very overwhelming, actually. Um, um, the, just to feel... I, f I feel my grandfather here. I don't want to see anyone disrespecting anyone's horse. Just as a century ago, there are orders to be obeyed, military discipline to follow. <laughs> Everything is rehearsed, every one with a role to play. But just as in 1917, it's the horses that make everything possible. Though man and beast are not always in perfect harmony. Whatever setbacks here pale into insignificance compared with the life and death challenges their forefathers had to overcome. Our Aussies just did us so proud. So I'm very proud about that. Even a century after the remarkable charge, the history is as evocative as ever. As the horse men and women ride towards Beersheba, Australian forces continue to battle against Islamic State in neighbouring Syria. The echoes of conflict never far from this troubled region. Philip Williams, ABC News, near Beersheba, Israel.